3.2.1, the mole. Okay, so this is some proper chemistry now. You're gonna sound like a chemist when you start talking about moles and you're not talking about nocturnal animals that dig up gardens. Uh, so what is a mole? Higher tier stuff this. So we talk about the amount of chemical, chemical amounts are measured in moles and we write mole, M-O-L, in um, after it just to show um, that we are scientists and that's what we do. What's good about the mole is the mass of one mole of any substance is the same as the relative atomic mass or relative formula mass of that substance but with a unit. The unit is grams. So if I have one mole of anything, I have the relative formula mass of that substance in grams. So I'm turning atoms, the number of atoms I've got, into a, a quantifiable amount that I can measure easily. This makes science so much fun and so easy in terms of calculations. So we don't need to talk about how many atoms we've got, we can talk about how many grams we've got and talk about how many moles we have of a substance. So, one mole of any substance contains a set amount of particles. So, well, this is called Avogadro's number and it goes 6.02 times 10 to the 23. So 6.02 times 10 to the 23 is the number of atoms in one mole of any substance. What do I mean by any substance? Well, if you try and remember, AMI FC, it's like almost like a French football team, A-M-I-E FC. That gives you an indication of the sorts of things we can describe as a substance in chemistry. So the A stands for atoms, the M stands for molecules, the I stands for ions, the E stands for electrons, the S stands for formula, and the C stands for compounds. So I can say one mole of a formula, I can say one mole of ions, one mole of molecules, one mole of atoms, one mole of electrons. I can say one mole of anything, and it will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 um, particles of that substance. Try using that, A-M-I-E-F-C, to try and remember six things that the word mole can be referred to or used to explain. So let's look at it more general. If you have one mole of carbon, what I've actually got is I've got a mass of carbon which equals the relative atomic mass of carbon. So if I look in the periodic table, carbon has a relative atomic mass of 12. So one mole of carbon will be 12 grams. Another way of thinking about this is 12 grams of carbon will have 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms within it. Now what's 12 grams? Well if you think about a Mars bar, a Mars bar is about 25 grams. Chop the Mars bar in half, that's just about 12 grams. Half a Mars bar, if it was made of carbon, would contain 6.02 times 10 to the 23 atoms. That's a lot of atoms in 12 grams of carbon. So if you were asked to calculate the number of atoms in a substance, what you need to work out is the relative atomic mass of the substance, and then you just do the mass that you have of the substance divided by the relative atomic mass to calculate the number of moles, and then you multiply that by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the 23. For example, how many atoms are in one gram of carbon? So you do one gram, over 12, 12 is a relative formula mass of relative atomic mass of carbon, and then times it by Avogadro's number. And the answer you get is 3.2.1. I'll leave you to work that out yourself. That would be worth three marks in exam if you did it to the correct number of significant figures. Um, so remember what a significant figure is, make sure you record it to the right amount when you're asked to in an exam.